All right. Welcome to the Barbarian Hour tonight. We have Scott, Skylar Grote. Skylar, how are we doing tonight? I'm good. Yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. And then we, of course, have the incomparable Hannah Mears. Hannah, how are you doing? Oh, you know I'm thrilled to be here, Zeb. Yeah, I know you're stoked. You're stoked on life, as I was just telling uh, oh. Skylar. <laughs> She's pumped. She's pumped, pumped to be it. Okay, let's dig right into it. There's a card coming up. You're on it, Skylar. I'm excited about it. Uh, what weight and who are you going to be wrestling at the next? It's Penn RTC, right? Correct. All right. What is the, what is the, what's the date, the weight, the opponent? So I am wrestling next Friday, which is the 29th. I'm wrestling at 68 plus three kilos, so 71. And my opponent is Anas from Egypt. So um, a little bit of an international match coming up, which is exciting uh, to wrestle somebody from another country. And she was a 2016 Olympian and African champ, I believe. So uh, pretty, pretty cool to be an Olympian. Wow. That, I don't know if we've had anybody that exotic on a card yet. That's that besides Bajrang, right? Like, I don't know who else has been on a card besides him. Like that is, that's amazing. Good for you. That's a great opponent. Uh, Where is she training here or is she going to travel here? So I think that she was training in New York um, the last couple of months or maybe a couple of years. I'm not really sure, but I think she's training with Lee Janes right now. So she's out of like talent wrestling club. Um, So she'll be wrestling for talent and I'll be wrestling for LVWC and NYAC. So nice. Good for you. That's awesome. I, I love to see the women on the cards. I think that, you know, it's a huge part of, advocating for women's wrestling and i think the the more we build the stars and the more that you get the international results i think the more we're going to see wrestling sanctioned i know pennsylvania is in the middle of a sanctioning battle right now and i know you're a champion of that right uh yeah so i'm in new jersey um right now but you know i i try to help with uh growing women's wrestling in new jersey and um, although I hate Pennsylvania, not actually, but, um, you know, I, I, I have, uh, some girls in Pennsylvania that train with me as well. So, you know, New Jersey sanctioned and women's wrestling has grown incredibly since New Jersey has been sanctioned. So I really hope that PA, you know, jumps on board soon and I know that they will. So, you know, it's really exciting times. It's, you know, it's changed so much over the last couple of years. When I was in high school, I wrestled, um, you know, for Blair, but I was only one of seven girls in New Jersey to be wrestling. So I went to Fargo um, with only, you know, six other girls. And now we have over 500 girls wrestling in New Jersey and they're able to wrestle an AC for a state championship now. So it's just crazy the amount of growth we've had in the last couple of years. And um, we're definitely going in the right direction. What do you think is the biggest thing that needs to happen though, to take like the next step of women's wrestling? We have a lot to talk about tonight in terms of the women's wrestling events. We're personally really excited about that. You could potentially be competing in later on, but the biggest step right now, you think that these States could take to really help women's wrestling. I think that one of the biggest steps that the wrestling community in general can take is just getting on board with women's wrestling, you know, welcoming young girls into the room and encouraging them to come to practice um, and not pushing them away. I think that at least when I was a kid growing up wrestling, I feel like sometimes I was kind of pushed away because Um, you know, I was nervous to go to a practice and not have another girl to drill with and stuff. So I think it's really important for coaches to be welcoming when a female does come into their room and make them feel comfortable and just try to help grow the sport. Because if we grow women's wrestling, we're going to grow wrestling in general. And, um, you know, wrestling could be the number one sport that everyone loves to watch and stuff, especially if we include all females. And I think that it's just super important that everybody jumps on the girls wrestling train. And that's what I would say. So when you look at it, I, you know, I bring up Pennsylvania, they're still not sanctioned yet, right? Like they're, Mm -hmm. they're the hotbed of scholastic wrestling. It's your rival, your New Jersey, their PA. What does PA got to do? 
to get on your level. You say it's seven girls when you're in high school, right? In the whole state, right? Now you're over at 500, over 500, right? What does PA got to do to get it sanctioned and get on the level and, and really do what the state of New Jersey has done with wrestling and, and girls in, in um, Scholastic? I know that there are so many people in Pennsylvania working so hard to get women's wrestling sanctioned and, you know, they're putting a lot of time and effort into that. You know, I know that they're on Zoom calls weekly trying to get, um, you know, a state tournament sanctioned for these girls. And I feel like the reason it's not happening is because there is still some push up, pushback from people in high positions and in positions of power. Um, and you know, that's hard to pass something when you have someone in a position of power that doesn't want it to happen. Um, so, you know, PA has just got to keep pushing through, keep fighting, you know, fight the good fight. And hopefully we get a tournament for those girls because they deserve it. I think it looks bad on PA if it doesn't happen, to be honest. Like we took so much pride and we still take pride in being, you know, the state known for wrestling. And if we don't do it, you're really just going to lose credibility in my opinion. And you see universities within Pennsylvania incorporating women's wrestling now. So I think at every level it should be incorporated. And I know there's some level of a state tournament that happens in Pennsylvania, but at the same time, people aren't tuning in because it's not as competitive because of what Skylar said before was it's women aren't as welcomed into wrestling rooms as they should be. It's not one of those come wrestle with the guys. It should be understood of, Hey, come train with us and we'll find you a partner so that you don't feel so dominated by men in the wrestling room and then intimidated because I think there is a difference between men and women in physique at that age. So I think it's necessary to address that in a way where it's, Hey, don't worry about it. Come in and we'll deal with that later. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a lot of, you know, we'll figure it out. I think that, um, you know, girls should be going to practice and the coaches should, you know, find a guy if there's no other girls for them to wrestle, you know, put them with a guy and, or with a boy and say, you know, you've got her today and she's tough. So, you know, you better step up and be a good partner for her uh, instead of like letting all of the kids in the room look the other direction and not pay attention to her. I think that leadership is really important. And, um, you know, I think that PA, uh, the people in power need to realize that, you know, it's different times and things are changing and whether they like it or not, like we're coming and we're going to be able to wrestle. So. Okay. So I'm in Ohio. Okay. I cover OAC uh, for the Ohio athletic committee. I went to a tournament two weeks ago and there were two girls wrestling in these boys tournaments. They had a girl tournament. They didn't have a good turnout. So these two elite girls came the next day and wrestled in the boys tournament. It was called Ohio's top talent. I don't know if you know either of these names, but you might want to write them down because there's a girl named Lyric Hetzer. I don't know if you've ever seen her check out her Instagram page. She is unbelievable. I think she's eight or nine years old. And another girl, uh, 12 years old, going on 13, uh, Talia Guntram. Oh, my. They are incredible. The Hetzer girl, everyone's like, oh, she's got a good chin whip. She stra- like just absolutely strapped this dude up. She tried mm-hmm. to chin whip him. She couldn't chin whip him. And I'm talking like the one where she gives them their back. She reaches back and just goes like, we've got another girl named Chloe Deerwester. She's pretty good. Um, she's a high schooler now. But these two girls, their trajectory is incredible. I was like, oh, my God. Um, Guntram, Talia Guntram, she's from Steubenville, Ohio. She made the finals at 80 pounds and wrestled a guy, uh, Gray Burnett, in the finals. She rode him for over 45 seconds, almost a minute. Gray Burnett just wow. took second at Tulsa Nationals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's, she's right there. She's incredible. I couldn't believe how good she was. And uh, the Hetzer girl, oh, my goodness. Lyric Hetzer is incredible. Like, and I mean, like aggressive, takes shots, gets clobbered in the face, keeps wrestling. Like she's tough. She's gritty. She's good in all three positions, top, bottom, neutral. And like, I'm talking like elite. She's beating up on really good youth wrestlers. I I couldn't believe it. I was like, it blew my mind. So here's here's the thing, Zeb. You're talking about these girls at this young level. And this is where we see a lot of young females 
dominate males in the sport of wrestling is at this young level. But like how you're talking about it now is how people need to continue talking about it as these females grow. Because once they start to hit like the teen years is where people start looking at them. I feel not all people, but you know what I'm saying? The people who are outside of the wrestling world are like, what are these girls doing? When are they going to be done? And that's where I think what you're saying now is where we're hoping it stays consistent later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Talia Guntram is some type of Olympic athlete. If she's like, yeah, I'm not going to do wrestling anymore. She could probably maybe go high jump. For, she's a, she was like eight inches taller than Gray Burnett. I was like, she was incredible. And she knew how to wrestle. It wasn't she, that she was just a good athlete or she's, uh, you know, developed faster, younger. No, I'm telling you her trajectory is some type of Olympic athletics. She's amazing. Like as far as an athlete. So like that, for us to get athletes like that, that's what's impressive to me. And like you're saying, there's a separation in the in the, the teenage years, right? That's when there starts to become a physical separation. I, they're really good. I, they're really good. We have Olivia Shore. She's really good. We have really good girls in the state of Ohio. And, you know, we need to get on where PA is. We have to sanction it the same way. And I bring PA up, but, you know, it's like Brooke Zumas, Dr. Brooke Zumas. She's a big advocate for sanctioning out of the Lehigh Valley. I know Brooke Zumas. She's a big, she's big into having it sanctioned. I just can't believe Ohio and PA don't have a, a, a state sponsored through the state association, state championships. It blows my mind. And, you know, we're, we're top 10 in population, both of us, right? You know, I think we're seventh or sixth. We're sixth or they're fifth, whatever it is. You know, that needs to happen. That needs to happen. And, and what New Jersey did with it was uh, pretty amazing, to be honest with you. And I saw Coach Ayers. He's really big into it. His daughter wrestles, at, you know, Coach Ayers at Princeton. So I just like the trajectory of a lot of the athletes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I really like, I take them seriously. I like that. It's awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I got to see that the Hetzer girl is incredible. She's a killer. I love it. I think it's great. I love it. Well, maybe we'll see them on one of these cards one day in the near future. That would be, I think, the goal. And don't just hop on the bandwagon, hop on the train, lead it, lead the front. Don't be afraid to throw the first punch out there. These states need to get behind women's wrestling because we get athletes like Skylar Grote right here. And we talked about the card a little bit and who your opponent is and Zeb, what you don't know, but Skylar did tell me before this started was she actually got to talk to her opponent a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. We won't drop all the details of the interview, but I am curious how that conversation went. What was the flow back and forth like between you two? Yeah, you know, the conversation went well. I think that um, we just talked about how we both respect each other and we're excited to get some competition in. I know she has um, a big tournament coming up, I think qualifying for the Olympics for Egypt. And, you know, I have last chance coming up. So uh, we're both looking at this um, card as a way to prepare ourselves for the next thing. And, yeah, we just talked about how excited we are, how excited we are to um, wrestle alongside some big names and um, just how excited we are to put it on the line. What do you see from her as an opponent going into this match from a technical standpoint? You said you've wrestled international competition. You have some experience with this, but an international match coming to you on your first ever RTC card. So what do you see from her from a technical standpoint? Yeah, I've watched a couple of her matches. I know she's super strong. Um, she's got, I think, seven or eight years on me. So she's a mom as well. So, you know, we're at definitely different points in our lives and different points in, you know, uh, how developed we are as wrestlers. She's, you know, towards the end, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. And so that'll be interesting to see. Um, and just kind of how we match up and where we are. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, she looks really tough. She's wrestled in the Olympics. She's wrestled, in, I, she won the African games. Um, so it'll be awesome to, you know, beat her and get that win under my belt for sure. Zeb, we talk about the age difference all the time in these types of cards. <laughs> well, she's wrestling a mom. So you know what, <laughs> women's wrestling, there it is. We can give birth and still get back on the mat is I think the biggest thing here. So uh, props to that. We always talk about, you know, guys having children and things like that, but they didn't have to go through 
the birthing process and then get back down to weight. So yeah, it's, de it's definitely different. You know, whenever I'm training alongside or competing against a mom, you know, I, I always have to give them respect. It's crazy. I can't say that I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to be done wrestling when I'm uh, ready for kids, but I have a lot of respect for, you know, the women that birth a, birth a child and then they're ready to hop back on the mat. It's pretty cool. So that's like, is there, is there mom strength? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is, dad strength mom is there mom strength? Yeah. Yeah. It's like dad strength, I guess. Mom <laughs> strength, same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I'll tell you what I've been in the, uh, I've been in the, uh, the, uh, I have two sons. Right. Yeah. And I was there, I was holding a leg, um, right leg. And while I have a different leg on each birth, um, it's something else. <laughs> experience. Uh, it's proud, something else. Right. So, so nothing but props to her. And she's in Egypt. And I teach, I, I taught about this thing called the Arab Spring, where like they overthrew this dictator, Hosni Mubarak. So her country has had some crazy stuff happen in the last 10 years. They were a part of the Arab Spring. So imagine what it's been like for her to maintain being an athlete and all this tumultuous governmental change and all yeah she she's got mom strength she's got i mean the arab spring was no joke yeah. she lived through that and that 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 to me is wild that oh, we're we are, here we are, thinking like 2020 is bad right <laughs> like you guys see yeah, 2011 and 2010 and 2011 in north africa in the middle east was there was all these dictators who were overthrown and she lived through that and, and there were like seven eight hundred a million people marching in the streets to have these people stuff i would love to hear what that was like for her if she was around that because you know some people don't participate in that right they're like oh you know i'm, I'm an athlete i got tunnel vision maybe that's not in her life but it, it changed everything in that country and that is just like she's lived through some stuff let's just put it that way and that is yeah, yeah i have so much admiration for people like that who come from egypt and in the middle east and North Africa, and they see the things they've seen. We're, we have it pretty uh, good in the United States of America, and I don't think her training situation compared to yours, Skylar, is completely different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I, think that's that's, I think that's the craziest thing about some international competition is the way they train compared to the way that we train here or are fortunate to have the facilities that we do have. And you see that a lot, crazy stuff happening in other countries as well. But our country experienced some chaos as well in 2020, maybe not to that severity, but people still going through it. But Skylar, your 2020, yes, there were some ugh moments, I know, but you won your first stop sign. You were the, what was it, US Open as well. You were, took second there. So your 2020 had some awesome moments, but I know it didn't end in the biggest tournament that you wanted it to. So take me through how your 2020 felt to you. Yeah, so in March, um, you know, when the pandemic started happening, I guess, um, I was in Canada and my school moved online and my wrestling was paused there. So I decided to come home to New Jersey because I just wanted to be somewhere secure um, during those times. So I came back home to live with my parents. And, you know, for the first like two months, I didn't get on the mat. I was just running a lot. And uh, finishing school that semester online and just trying to control what I could control in um, COVID times. I was lifting a lot. Like I said, I was running a lot and, um, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew that there wasn't going to be competition for a while. Everything was getting canceled, but um, I told myself that I was going to stay ready and that, um, you know, the opportunity would come eventually that COVID wouldn't last forever and that my time to shine was just around the corner, whether, you know, that was a month away or three months away. I just promised myself I would be ready. And so I had the opportunity to wrestle at um, senior nationals and I prepared for, you know, a couple months. I was on the mat for a couple months. I prepared running earlier on and, you know, I wrestled really well at senior nationals. Um, I took second. I lost to Forrest in the finals, but I was proud of my performance. I thought that, 
you know, I jumped levels from the previous time I wrestled. And then I decided to go to U23 too, because I wanted to wrestle again. And I ended up winning U23s. And that was, I think, my sixth or seventh time at that tournament. And I had never won. So I took second twice. And I went to two junior Pan Ams and won two junior Pan Am titles. But I never made a world team. So it was bittersweet winning because obviously no U23 worlds happened this year because of COVID. COVID. So um, that kind of stinks. But, you know, I wanted to go out there and prove that I could win that tournament. And um, it only took me six years, but I did it. And now I'm just getting ready for this card. And after this, I'll be getting ready for RTC Cup. And then after that, I'll have last chance. And then I'll have Olympic trials. And then I'll have world team trials, which I'm already qualified for. So there's a lot of wrestling coming for me. And I'm excited to show everybody how hard I've worked and show everybody, you know, the different wrestler I am, because I truly believe that I am a totally different wrestler than I was last year. That's exciting. That's absolutely exciting. Zeb, do you want to add to that? I, my question is, first off, where is your school in, in Canada? Yeah. And what is international travel like? You can't do it right now, can you? Yeah, so I go to school at Brock University. It's in St. Catharines, Ontario. And yeah, since we're all online, I'm now in New Jersey and um, I couldn't wrestle there. So I came home so I could wrestle. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I can get into Canada right now. Um, I do rent a house there. I'm paying to live in a house I don't actually live in. So that kind of stinks. But I think I'm technically allowed to get into Canada because I do rent a house there. But I'm scared to go because I have to quarantine for two weeks if I go. And then I'm scared I'm not going to be able to get back into the United States. So. Okay, I guess yeah. I guess no, no, no trips, no uh, VRBOs to uh, Skylar's rental property in, uh, in Canada for me. I'll, I'm going to hold off on that. And that, wow, that's crazy. Okay. I, and I knew that because we're okay. The, the last, the Pan Am qualifier, right. That was in Ottawa, right? Uh, you, I'm telling you, yes, it was in Ottawa. Yes, it yes, was in yes, Ottawa. Yes. And that yes. was like where David Taylor qualified 86 Q. Zane was the only one who failed to qualify there. I believe. Okay. We just yep. made the finals. Uh, I know that uh, Amar Dazi qualified for Canada there, but like, it's crazy. Like I remember interviewing Terval when he was there. And then I remember watching the wrestling. It was the most bizarre thing ever to watch that. Were you already out back to Jersey by March? Uh, so that tournament, some of my housemates actually wrestled in it because, um, Brock's pretty good and we have a lot of females on the national team as well as males so my housemates actually wrestled in that tournament and a week later I came home to New Jersey okay so you were oh wow that's wild mm -hmm. so that, okay you can't cross the border you gotta fly right I don't think you can cross the I think the borders are closed but you did you fly home I think I can get in though, because I am technically a resident. So I could probably get over the border, but yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. I I've just been here and I don't need to go to Canada right now. So can't tell you. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't think you want to find out. It sounds like yeah, then yeah, you will be I know. back at the Bryce Jordan center. <laughs> yeah, I know um, my housemates, though, they told me that they were going to try to come to the States to train, and they were obviously going to fly, and um, their government said no. So this was wow. recent, probably like wow. two days ago. So their government said no to the States, but they're allowed to go to Europe. So I think they're going to go to Europe for a couple tournaments, but um, nobody's allowed to come to the United States. <laughs> Yeah, which is crazy. And that's what Skylar and I were talking about, Deb, like even before you jumped in here was I knew a lot of hockey guys from that played at Penn State couldn't get in over the border, couldn't come graduate in Pennsylvania, like everything was virtual and Skylar unfortunately may have to have that experience as well. She's going to graduate in April. So I want to just celebrate that accolade really quick as well, because I know she's smart. So congratulations on almost graduating, maybe virtually, <laughs> unfortunately, but thank you. You're welcome. What degree Skylar? Uh, I'm getting my degree in business with a concentration in entrepreneurship. Okay. 
how many yeah. quads do you think you have in, in you? And I know that this, this one's going to be weird from 2021 to 2024, but how many quads do you feel like you can do Olympic quads and, and, and try and get on an Olympic team? Oh gosh. Um, so I love wrestling. It depends, you know, where I am in three years, I think, um, you know, I'm hoping I'm right at the top. And if that's the case, then I could see myself doing three after this year. Th three more quads? Three. That's 12 years. Okay, so that's 11. Me... That's 11. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because so we're going to have a, a three year quad, right? I can see myself wrestling into, you know, my 30s, 32, 33. I mean, I'm 23 right now. So I could definitely see myself wrestling for the next 10 years. Um, you know, when I'm ready to have kids, that's when I'm going to stop. So somewhere around 32, 33, 34 is, you know, it just depends how my body holds up. You know, I definitely want to wrestle until I'm around 30. But, um, you know, once I hit 30, I think I'll start thinking about, you know, where I am in my life, but I love wrestling. And if my body can hold up, I'm going to wrestle for as long as I can. I love it. Listen, love Zeb, it. she's got a good head on her shoulders though. She's laying it out as what she wants to do, but also is going to be getting her MBA in the process. So props to you for wanting to study all of that while still trying to train as well. I know that's something you want to do though, but so she'll have a way to make money as well outside of the sport, I think with her brain, but Something really excited, I know Zeb and I are excited about it, you have to be as well, is the opportunity to make money if you get drafted in the Captain's Cup that will be taking place in Iowa City, I believe February 13th and 14th. So how are you feeling about being a potential draft pick for that? Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, I don't think that we've had anything like this. Actually, I know we've had nothing like this. So it's super exciting to have you know, 36 other, you know, 36 female athletes competing in this event and we get to win money for it and all eyes are on us. It's like, this is the event that's happening that day. And I'm pretty sure no other events are really happening or big events are happening. So it's like all eyes on us. And, um, you know, we don't always have all eyes on us as female athletes. So it's super exciting that, um, you know, this is made to be a big thing. I, you know, I have people reaching out to me being like, this is so cool. This is so exciting. Like, that's awesome that, you know, you could potentially be on that. Like people are fired up about it. And I just think it's really awesome for women's wrestling. Like, just think about all the young girls who are going to be tuning in and watching, you know, these women and, you know, compete against each other and do this as their job. And, um, you know, it's going to be awesome for younger girls to see this and hopefully, you know, want to be a part of it when they're older. And um, I just think it's a great thing for wrestling. It's a great thing for women's wrestling. And I'm excited to be a part of that. And it's going to be an awesome tournament. So it should be screw Valentine's Day weekend. Fall in love with some <laughs> women's Wrestling. wrestling yes because I think the coolest part about it is you finally get an opportunity to make some real money here like let's just talk about the fact it's eighteen thousand dollars for the winner which would be about three thousand dollars an athlete so three thousand dollars I'm sure I'm a 23 year old you're a 23 year old we can do a lot with three thousand dollars so what would be something you'd want to do with that cash yeah. So like we were saying, I like to save my money. Um, I'm a, I mean, I'm a business student. I feel like that have, until she has it in her pocket. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have to be good with money. I feel like, um, you know, when you're into business and stuff, so I'll definitely save some of it, but you know, maybe I'll buy a cheeseburger or something after I'm done wrestling with some of it. Um, yeah. So it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome to be able to make some money um, wrestling and I think it's well-deserved. You know, we, we do this as a job. Like I, yeah, I'm a student, but also wrestling is my job. And I feel like women wrestlers aren't paid like it's their job. They're, you know, kind of treated like it's just their hobby or whatever, but now's, now's the time that we can make wrestling a job, you know, the, the men at the RTCs are making money. Women are starting to make money as RTC athletes. And it's a really exciting time to be able to get paid, uh, to do something that you love and something that takes so much of your time that you deserve to get paid for. So. I, I talked to Skylar I was at the U S men's, uh, freestyle camp this weekend, uh, this weekend and last week. 
and I was talking to Joe Russell and we were talking about the economy of wrestling. And now you're talking about it. Like the guys are making money. And now a lot of these cards, they're starting to pay the women to be on the cards. There's an economy of wrestling where you used to have to coach. You'd have to coach and you'd have to train, right? That's how, that's how the, the men's freestyle was. Well, then the women, if the women, if a woman wanted to, to stay in it and sustain it, they had to get a coaching job, right? Mm -hmm. It's turning out to where you can now just be an RTC athlete and concentrate on, you don't got to worry about this kid going to class or getting that kid a workout. You can, you know, concentrate strictly on Skyler, mm -hmm. right? The economy of it, it, it's there. I think the structure's there with the RTCs and what they're doing. And I think women getting on board with on the RTCs is a huge part of it. When you're yeah. done, is that what you're going to do? Are you going to join an RTC? What will you do? Yeah, um, I wrestle for LVWC right now. So um, I am an RTC athlete, but I think one day I actually want to be a women's wrestling coach. Um, I know I'm getting my MBA and that's going to be in my back pocket, but I feel like I owe it to little girl wrestlers that they deserve, you know, me as a coach and they deserve other elite females as coaches. And, you know, we don't see a lot of female um you know, wrestlers as coaches, because there's not many past female wrestlers who, you know, want to be coaches or, you know, there's a couple, but I think that they deserve more and they deserve more representation. And I feel like that's kind of my calling. And, you know, I want to coach an all women's team one day. And that's kind of like the goal. That's an awesome goal to have. And I know just from like hearing you speak, you have just this way of really rationalizing this information you've thought about it you've analyzed it you're not just talking to spit information like this is stuff you're super passionate about and you have some really cool structures and values that you've grown up with to shape you into the athlete that can see this path now but I think someone who's a sports lover as I've always said you know young kids should have the opportunity to explore everything before they put all their eggs in one basket and I know you feel a little personal about that too so tell me who young Skylar was and who that who you would want those young girls to see you as other than just an elite wrestler yeah so young Skyler um I started wrestling when I was eight and you know I also I always had like this energy about me and this competitiveness about me and um you know I always wanted to fight people or whatever my sister's a year and a half older than me and you know we got into some fights pulling hair and stuff and I I was just always strong and kind of built as a young girl so I kind of fell in love with wrestling because of that but you know there's there's also a vulnerable um, part of me and there was a vulnerable part of me when I was young I was always anxious you know going into practice um, you know I liked being the only girl sometimes but other times I get so anxious about not having a partner and you know a lot of tears were shed about uh, being the only girl and I used to care what people said about me so you know young Skylar she was very timid and insecure and didn't know if, you know, women's wrestling was the path she wanted to go down or something she wanted to do when she was older. But, um, you know, if like people always say, well, what would you tell her? Like looking back on it, it's just like, you know, keep up with the good fight and keep doing what you love. And um, I always had my parents there to tell me like, you know, don't quit because parents are, telling you you don't deserve to be here they they always said to me you know if you want to quit wrestling because you hate wrestling then go ahead and quit but if you love wrestling and you're just quitting because some parent doesn't approve of you wrestling then that's no reason to quit and we're not going to let you quit for that reason so um yeah I just I really hope that young girls are surrounded by people that support them and I think that we as a wrestling community have to take that step and ensure that they're being supported and um, ensure that they're able to reach their goals with as little burdens as possible like there's always going to be hurdles to overcome and um, there's always going to be people that don't approve of what you're doing but um, I think we can minimize those hurdles. So I agree, but you've also been a part. So you've seen both sides of it where you were like the only girl with all guys 
but then you also played females like all female sports as well with softball am i correct so you played softball yeah. so what were the two atmospheres like so you're playing with an all-female team a softball and then you're about the only girl in the room with a bunch of guys so how were those dynamics different yeah i think that i felt more comfortable around all females on the softball team you know i felt um I always felt on the same playing field, whereas in wrestling, when I hit the high school level, um, it was a lot for me to keep up with the guys. Like, I did it, and I was tough enough to do it. But, you know, when you hit 14 as a girl and you're wrestling 14-year-old boys, 15-year-old boys, you know, they're physically stronger. There are differences between um, girls and guys at that age. So um, I really had to push myself in that environment and – you know, I don't regret it. It made me tougher. And um, I loved my experience at Blair. And I had a great time being the only girl on the men's team. But it doesn't have to be that way. You know, we can have all female teams where um, girls are wrestling girls on the high school level. Um, I think that girls wrestling boys on the elementary, middle school level, I think it's okay. You know, there's not that much physical difference between um, athletes, but I think that once you move to that high school level, then it's starting to get tough on the females. And I think that, you know, we definitely need to separate, uh, the guys from the girls, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that I was just basically more comfortable uh, around all females and I'm really lucky to be on an all female team now in college. So it, it's cool being able to tap into both experiences. Yeah, so she has a really good vantage point for that is what we're trying to get at. You have an awesome viewpoint for that. Definitely. Uh, Skylar, was Jeff Buxton or uh, Brian Antonelli, who was your high school coach or did you have a, a girls high school coach? My first year I had coach Danhoff and coach Clavel, and then I had coach Antonelli. So Buxton's always been my club coach. So I would go from Blair practices sometimes right to Buxton's club practice at night. And that was a lot, but I did that like at least once a week um, in the beginning. And, you know, if you know, Blair practices, it's a lot, a lot to go from a Blair practice to a club practice, but um, you know, I was coached by some awesome coaches, uh, Antonelli, Buxton, Clavel, um, Dan Hoff. You know, I've just, that's one thing in my wrestling career I am so fortunate for. I, I've never had a bad coach, not one. And, um, you know, not everybody can say that. And I think I'm truly blessed to be, uh, to have had those experiences and to have had those coaches willing to help me. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I love it. I love hearing it. I love hearing a story like that. I like, I like you were timid and then you figured it out, right? You got mm -hmm. confidence. Did you gain a lot of confidence? Would you say like, did it give you a lot of confidence? I think that that's a, what athletics do for a lot of people. Did it give you the confidence to make a run, get a stop sign. Finally, do you think it gave you confidence to be outspoken about, you know, sponsoring women's wrestling and sanctioning it in different States? Do you think that that's what gives you so much superior confidence? Yeah, for sure. I think that a lot of times I, you know, I was timid and I didn't want to speak up. And because I went through those experiences being a female wrestler and, um, you know, getting that negativity and stuff, it's really shaped me into the person I am today because, in high school, for example, I would go to club practice and the boys wouldn't want to wrestle me. And I was scared. I, I literally can't tell you how scared I was. I was so nervous to go to practice. Um, I would go and I would force myself to go, but I didn't want to go. There was every ounce of me didn't want to go because I was so nervous for the first 30 seconds when they say, get a partner. I was just so nervous that I wouldn't have a partner or that no one would want to go with me or that I would be you know, pulling someone down or whatever. But now it's like, I go into practice and I have the confidence to be like, who do you have today? And they'll say someone, I'll be like, no, you have me. So it's really cool how I can just, you know, go into a club practice and just be like, no, you're going with me today. Like there's no, there's no questions. It's me. And um, it. yeah, it's just, it's really helps me grow into that confident, um, athlete I am today. And I think one of the most um, 
significant things pe someone has said to me or most important thing someone said to me is you have to be kind of selfish in this sport, you know? Um, you have to be humble, but you have to be selfish. And that's something that I've recently um, done. You know, I'm, I'm selfish and I'm humble at the same time. And you have to find that balance of being like, you know, this is what I need. This is what I need from you. Um, to get me to where I need to be. And that's like kind of my new approach, just, just kind of being selfish, um, but that, not letting things get to my head at the same time. That's so funny you said that too, because I think growing in this career field as well, I've heard that statement so many times. And I don't know if it's just what they tell females in these types of situations, but I've, I've heard it too. It's, it's don't be selfish, you know, don't be timid, ask what you want, demand it. Um, know that, know your value and know your worth. So I think it's okay. There's a great balance. Like you said, being selfish without being a jerk about it. You just have to know that other people are looking out for themselves and you can find that balance of wanting to be looking out for someone, but also keep yourself in mind. So I think that's a great lesson to teach anyone right now. Yeah, exactly. So I talked to Jaden the other day. I did an interview with him, talked to him about like social justice talked about he talked about bwa the uh black wrestling association that he's a, a member of is there anything like that that you're doing with sanctioning more wrestling and more states for girls is there any anything that you're doing to push ahead the cause of girls wrestling and creating equality amongst you know opportunity at least for competition for boys and girls men and women in wrestling is there anything that you're doing like that skylar yeah, so I actually run an all-female practice at Buxton Athletic Training Center on Sunday. So every Sunday we have anywhere from 11 to 25 girls come together and practice together for an hour and a half and just be in an all-female environment and get to wrestle other tough females. And, um, you know, I have a couple girls who have never tried the sport um, prior to coming to my practices. And... I find that once these girls try it for the first time, they love it. Like I've never had a girl come and try the sport and not come back. I have one girl who just asked me, she was like, you know, I've never wrestled before, but I really want to come. Like, am I welcome to come? And I'm like, of course you're welcome to come. Like they, they assume like it's for like the elite and they're not allowed to come to my practice or whatever. But I'm like, of course you're allowed to come. Like we're trying to grow women's wrestling. Anyone can come. And she came and she hasn't missed a practice since. So it's just super special to be able to share my love for the sport with other females, other females, like not even other female wrestlers. Like we're getting other females who have never tried the sport. So it's awesome. And I also give um, private lessons, you know, to young females, but also young boys too. And I think that's important. You know, I'm just, I'm not just um, a person for young females to look up to. I think, I think it's important for young athletes to look up to, you know, leaders of both genders. Um, and, you know, I have a group of four boys who I train once a week and they look up to me. And I think at first I was like kind of caught off guard because I was like, these young boys look up to me. Like, this is weird. Like they look up to a female. Like it's just something that I wasn't really expecting, but you know, they're asking me when I'm wrestling, they think it's the coolest thing ever that they have a female coach. And I'm like, that is just so important to have, you know, people of both genders in leadership positions. That way, um, you know, these c young kids are taught at a young age to respect people of both genders. And it's just a really awesome thing to watch. And I, you know, I was really fortunate to, for them to just respect me right off of the bat. And that's a really positive thing because we're moving in the right direction that I automatically got that respect from them. Social media, how do we find you? Social media, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Don't add me on Facebook, but you can add, <laughs> you can add, you can add my Instagram and my Twitter. Uh, I think they're both under Sky Grow, so S-K-Y-G-R-O-T-E. And, um, you know, I make some tweets, a lot of tweets about women's wrestling and just wrestling in general. And then I use my Instagram as a way to, pro to promote my wrestling and what I'm up to. Not just wrestling, though. You know, there's more to life than just wrestling. So, um, yeah, follow me. 
message me if you have questions. And if you're in New Jersey and you're a female wrestler, come to my practices. I She's all over social media. Trust me. <laughs> Follow her. There is no denying that she will be popping up on your feed, which is extremely important from a branding and marketing perspective as well. Keep your face out there. Keep your name out there. Keep people knowing who you are. I think you have a great head on your shoulders in terms of where you want to go and the direction of just life outside of wrestling. Yes, young men, young women looking up to you is if I was a parent, I'd be proud to have my child look up to you as well. So congratulations with everything you're doing moving forward. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else you have for us? Is there anything like uh, anything, anything you want to talk about that we missed that, that needs to be in here that, that is like essential that, I mean, we're, we're open, we're open. I'm an open book here. I like, I want to hear it. And we're with blank pages. I like to hear stories told. Is there anything that we missed that, that you're a champion of a cause. Uh, I don't no, know. Maybe. I just, I think that we all as a wrestling community, like I said, we just need to do the best we can do to help female athletes um, on their journeys. And we need to kind of make it our problem. I think a lot of the times it's just like, oh, well, that's your problem. Like you figure that out. That's your problem. But I think that we need to start making it our problem, you know, not having female wrestling sanctioned in Pennsylvania you know, people are so quick to push it off onto other people. How about, you know, you take a stand and, you know, you do something to help uh, get that sanctioned or you do something to help a female wrestler if she's struggling and doesn't have a partner, you know, it's a lot about standing up and taking leadership roles and, um, you know, being a leader. And I think that being a leader is, you know, creating a comfortable environment for all genders and all people and all races and, all everything. And I think that we just need to be more inclusive as a wrestling community to everything. And I think that wrestling is really going to grow if we do that. Very well that, that, that's it. That's what I, when I mean, is there anything else? That's, that's a good, anything else right there. I like that. I like that. That's good stuff. Skylar. Awesome. Thanks. So sky Groat, that's who we're looking for on social media, right? Sky Groat. Yes. Sky Groat. Okay. I'm going to, I don't even know if I follow you. I mean, shame on me. If don't I'm worry, lying. You got me fired up. Get with it. Hey, I'm, I'm fired <laughs> up. I got to go check it out. I got the phone sitting right here. I mean, I want to be present here, but I, you know, there's the phone here and you know, I gotta, right. I gotta stay here. You know, I gotta stay engaged, but Skylar, thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. I will, uh, I'll, uh, make sure that we, I don't know. I don't think we're going to have to cut anything here. I think we got a, we got a winner here, Skylar. Jeez, oh, Pete. Yeah, we do. She's um, very well spoken. She knows what she wanted to say. And hey, maybe one day, Zeb, you're going to see a female reporter, Matt side interviewing a female wrestler who just dominated on the mat. Talk about a step for the sport of wrestling there. I love yes, it. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. It's, it's a privilege, you know, to do this kind of stuff. And um, to, you know, have a voice and it's just a great opportunity for me to put my name out there. It's a great opportunity for, you know, young girls to watch this and, um, get to see all the awesome stuff that's happening for women's wrestling. So again, thank you guys.